I'd like to introduce to you Tom Lovejoy. Tom Lovejoy is many things. He's the chair of the Yale Institute of Biospheric Studies. He also chairs the Biodiversity Group at the Heinz Center, where he works in Washington. And he's, of course, professor at George Mason University. He was, until recently, advisor to the World Bank on biodiversity. But I think perhaps what most people remember is that Tom Lovejoy introduced the word biodiversity to humanity way back in the early 1980s. Tom, welcome back to Yale. My first question to you is on biodiversity. It is the living fabric of this planet. It is that which sustains us. And yet, I don't see that many companies as yet who recognize biodiversity as part of the environment which they must look after in order to be successful companies into the future. Do you see them? Uh, I see, you know, corporations doing bits and pieces of it, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily in a systematic way. I see, you know, some outstanding corporations, but a small number like Boticario and, and Natura in Brazil. And basically, if we hope to have a reasonable future for people, e indeed for corporations, mm -hmm. we have to find a way for all, all corporations to take these things into account. And when you say take them into account, Tom, do you mean actually start measuring their impacts on nature? In other words, recognizing how much fresh water they consume, how much biodiversity they impact, how much carbon they emit? Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, say a road is being built somewhere. Mm. The mm. impact of the road mm. on the immediate biodiversity may be limited, mm -hmm. and that may be all that particular corporation needs to worry about. Uh, mm. But that only works if government is going to pay attention to the secondary impacts of mm -hmm. that road as population and development comes into a region. Right. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's time to take these values and put them into day-to-day decision-making. Mm -hmm. Today, Tom, not many companies are doing that. I think companies perhaps today driven by the profit motive are chasing growth, growth in volumes, growth in profits. Indeed, governments, as measured by GDP, yeah. are chasing growth. And just the thought comes to me uh, to ask you, is growth the only response in a natural world? Do you have things growing without getting bigger? I mean, we know that if a hamster kept growing at the same rate at which it grows <laughs> in the first week, yeah. by the end of a year, a hamster would weigh 8 billion tons. That's right, you'd have obesity problems in hamsters. <laughs> That's so, right. uh, so how does nature handle this problem? So, I mean, it's interesting. There are, there are two forms of growth in mm -hmm. nature. One where the organism does consume more and gets bigger, mm -hmm. and the other in which it simply becomes more complex, like when a caterpillar gets transformed into a butterfly. Right. right. Uh, so I think what we need to do is move along a spectrum away from the obese hamster uh, <laughs> yeah. towards the caterpillar yeah. butterfly model. I don't know that you ultimately get all the way mm. to the butterfly model, but uh, you can get a lot closer than we are today. That'd be great. Effectively, an economy that is a butterfly as against a caterpillar. Absolutely. Is there a term for this? Is there a it's, term? Called, it's called growth by intussusception. Growth by intussusception. Yeah, it's okay. a very obscure term. <laughs> Uh, but it's recognized as a form right. of growth in biological systems. Fantastic, Tom. Thanks very much for this idea. <laughs> I think we should get this across to every corporation 2020. Absolutely. Butterflies everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> that was Tom Lovejoy, interviewed at Yale University, talking to us about growth by intersusception, growth which enables organisms to grow more complex rather than just bigger. Like he says, it wouldn't do much good if we had an earth run over by 8 billion ton hamsters.